So last time we talked on this channel, we talked about storing memories. And today now we're going to go over what you can actually do with those stored memories as we learn about retrieving memory. Now retrieval happens when we need to use information that we have learned. Retrieval is the process of bringing information out of our long-term memory. This typically happens in one or two ways. The first being recall, which is when you bring information to mind without any outside help or cues. For example, when you're writing an FRQ in class or working through one in my ultimate exam slayer, you have to generate the answer completely on your own. That's recall in action. It's just you and your memory. No external cues to help you out. Now the next type is recognition, and this is when you identify information that's presented to you, using external cues to guide you. Multiple choice questions are a perfect example. Like when you're taking a unit test in AP Psychology or practicing the Ultimate Review Packet or Exam Slayer. You don't have to come up with the answer from scratch. You just have to recognize the correct choice among the different options. And this is where good practice really matters. That's why in my Ultimate Review Packet and Exam Slayer, I made sure to add a breakdown of each question so you can instantly review why each option is either right or wrong, ultimately allowing you to refine your recognition skills and help you improve your performance for when it really matters in class. Now generally we can see that recognition is easier than recall and this is because those outside cues help spark your memory while recall relies entirely on your own retrieval ability. Now to help make sure you don't mix up these two concepts think of it this way. Recognition is like being shown a familiar face in a crowd while recall is like trying to describe that person from your memory without any picture in front of you. All right, now we can see that memory retrieval doesn't happen in isolation. We are constantly being influenced by cues from our environment, our mood, and even our physical state, all of which can make it easier for a memory to be retrieved, or it could actually make it harder. We can see retrieval actually improves when the cues at the time of recall match the conditions under which the memory was originally formed. For example, we can see see that some memories are context dependent. Context dependent memory is when retrieval is improved when you're in the same environment as when you first learned the information. For example, if you studied your AP Psychology vocabulary terms while sitting in your classroom at your desk, you may find it easier to recall those same terms during a test in that same classroom in that same desk. The sight, sounds, and even the feel of the environment act as triggers that help bring the memory back to mind. Sometimes memories can actually be harder to recall when you're in a different context than usual. And this is because many memories are strongly tied to the environment in which they were created. For example, I remember a time when I was getting off a roller coaster with my family. We were over two hours away from the school where I taught, and I had never seen students in that setting before. Suddenly, I heard my name being shouted by a group of my students who were about to get on the ride, and instantly I recognized their faces, but... I uh, completely blanked on their names. It honestly took me a little while before their names came back to me. I usually saw those students in the classroom context and the new environment of an amusement park in a different city disrupted my retrieval cues and made my recall slower. All right, now another type of memory that you want to be familiar with is mood congruent memory, which is when you're more likely to recall memories that match your current mood. For example, when you are in a good mood and feeling happy, you're more likely to remember other happy experiences. But if you are mad, you're more likely to actually remember more negative experiences. And lastly, there is also state-dependent memory, which is when memory retrieval is improved if you're in the same physical or mental state as when the memory was created. For instance, if you are sick, you're more likely to remember memories of when you are sick. Okay, so now that we've talked about the different memories and also the different types of recall, let's shift our focus on how we can actually improve our recall ability. To start, remember the more you connect new information to what you already know and create meaningful associations, the easier it will be to remember the information later on. The more associations and connections you make, the more retrieval cues you have associated with the memory, which makes it easier for you to find the information in the future. You also want to make sure that you practice distributed practice when trying to learn new information. And even though it may not sound fun, make sure you test your 
yourself as you learn the new information. Remember, distributed practice is when you spread out your study sessions over time instead of trying to just cram everything at once and utilize mass practice. When you space out your study sessions instead, you take advantage of the spacing effect, which allows your brain to truly encode and store the information. Spacing out your study also helps you spot areas where you are struggling. Each time you return to the material, you're reinforcing what you know and identifying what you need to work on, which leads to better long-term memory, which if you think about it, will actually save you time, allowing you to study less and actually learn more. When you identify your weak spots, it allows you to focus on reviewing the information that you need to review, instead of just trying to review everything each time you study. Now, I also mentioned that you want to test yourself as you study. And remember, this is helpful because of the testing effect. The testing effect shows us that taking tests or quizzes actually improves long-term memory more than just rereading or reviewing notes. Since every time you try to answer a question, you have to recall the information. You end up strengthening the neural pathways connected to the memory and identifying areas in which you need to study more. Again, this is just one of the reasons why I include so many practice quizzes in my ultimate review packet and so many practice tests in my ultimate exam slayer. Now, one of the last ways in which you can help improve your memory retrieval is by practicing metacognition, which is when you spend time to reflect on your own learning and thinking process, which can give you insight into what you truly understand and what you are struggling with. For example, after you take a test, you should spend some time reflecting on how you studied and prepared for that test. You also should take some time to look over the test results with your teacher. Or if you took a unit exam in my Ultimate Exam Slayer, you should take time looking at the breakdown of your test. This will allow you to see if you keep missing certain questions or topics, which will help inform you of your strengths and weaknesses, which you can use to improve your studies in the future. At the end of the day, the more you review, practice, and test yourself, the stronger your memories will become. All right, well, that's all for this video. Now, don't forget to check out the practice resources in the Ultimate Review Packet and Exam Slayer. And consider subscribing. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time online.